Okay. Okay, so when I run this code, Mabola, this the way it is, um, it will run, it will echo. Echo, this is like C out. You remember C out in C++, eh? Mm. Yes. Or, or I can even use the word print if I want. Print. Print is the same as it. Print is same as it, C out. So you can see print, it's, it also works. So I can use either print or echo. That is that is just in PHP. In PHP, yes. Okay. PHP. Okay, now, now follow me closely. I want to encrypt. Remember, what is inside here is the name Mabola, isn't it? Yes. Uh huh. I want to encrypt the name Mabola. I'm going to use a what is called. There's one of them is MD5. M D five. Then I open the bracket. Then I get this very uh, send, uh, and I, then I put it between the bracket. So semicolon. So now, if I save this one, I save this one. Then I say refresh. This is how the name Mabola will look like. So that name Mabola, as it travels in the network this is what will travel in the network, not my actual name. So that is what is called encryption. Is it, is it clear? Yes. Yes, that is one method you can encrypt. There's another method you can encrypt data. <clears throat> Let me try if I can remember it. Um, I use something like uh, password, password, pass, pass, word, password, hash, open bracket. Then the first thing I need to put in there. Okay, just a moment. Let me just accept some people. Okay, the first thing I need to put in there is the, the variable itself, comma, then I put password default. Password default. And I think these must be in capital letters. I, sh I should type them in capital letters. I think they should be capital letters. Password. Password. I'm not sure, but I need to password the hash. 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 Okay, let me just leave it in small letters the way it was. If it doesn't work out, then we'll change. Then here, password D, oh no. Password default. Pass, pass, word, password D. Why is it bringing this? Password default. Default. Okay, this one is okay. Password default is okay. I'm wondering why this one, this one is a keyword, but it has not Hush. Uh -huh. I think that is the correct spelling now. Okay, let me run this one. Uh, this Mabola here, let's see how it will come out this time. This is to the old one. Now I'm refreshing. Oops. I think there's an error somewhere. 
uh, that's why it's telling me all this language that um, what is this uh, undefined constant default default undefined default default password default. Okay, echo pass. Maybe, maybe I need to interchange them. Maybe, I'm not sure. I've forgotten. Does refuse. Okay, let me check what really how I wrote this in a program. There's a program that I wrote. Oh yeah, okay, I have it somewhere. Password hash. Password. The password default. Default. Password hash. Password default. Maybe I should type the password default in capital letter only. Okay, so this should be in capital letter, I think. Password D if default. Uh -huh. I think so. So let me run this. Uh -huh. This is how Mabola looks like. Just the name Mabola. It looks like this. Too long. But you can't see, you can't see anything. Yes. You can't tell anything. You can't make any sense of it. You can't completely, completely. No. You can't make any sense of we it. We can't, like, we can't see anything. Can you just see the whiteboard? You can't see anything. Maybe mm -hmm. it's my screen. No, yeah, I can see. Try oh. to scroll. Yeah, I can see. Try to scroll, probably. Okay. I've seen now. Uh -huh. So this is what will go from a computer. This is what will move from this computer here uh, to a server. So yesterday when you, when you saw me doing stuff, I typed my, my password. After typing my password, if my password is one, two, three, four. Okay, let's see how one, two, three, four looks like. It's not the password I typed. Please don't go around saying the password is one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Save it. So this one, two, three, four, how is it going to look like? It's going to look like this. It's going to look like this. So this one, two, three, four will be changed. And this is what will move between here so much that if there is a bad guy in between here, some bad guy, then this bad guy will not, if you, that, that bad guy in between there is trying to hack here, so that is choose my password, Baba Caesar Vomer. So even when you are WhatsApping, you are here, you are WhatsApping, and then you are WhatsApping your friend, just know that what goes in between there, when they say end-to-end -end encryption, this is what they mean. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So that's what they mean, end-to-end -end encryption. Okay, now we go back to what we were doing with the, we digressed, but at times I always want to make sure that to understand what you are talking about, not just learning for the sake of it. Okay, okay. so okay. Um, 
here we are. HTTP, what's the difference between this one and this one? By now, you should tell me the difference. What's the difference? And what's the difference between this and this one? You have gone quiet, you don't want to talk. What is the difference between this one and this one? Both of them, you have a computer this side and there's another computer, a server. So when you connect it, it goes there. Between the two, if you Not use sure. if you use the HTTP, you type Mabola here. What moves in this is to Mabola HTTP, and as well as Telnet. What moves in between here is still the same, same words, no difference. They are not changed. But if you use SSH to use, to use HTTP. Then just know that. That's not that. The information between your computer and the server somewhere there is encrypted. Somewhere there. Mr. West, I have a feedback. So that data is encrypted. I hope I've made this point clear. Yes, very clear, sir. Okay, so now, how do you tell that this website is HTTP, this other website is not HTTP? Ladies and gentlemen, I've seen so many of you many times, you post, oh no, uh, maybe, I don't know how I can put this one, but there are times people who create a website and then they are telling you, no, we want to reset your account and also this and that. Then you check the type of protocol that website is using. You find it's just say it HTTP, then you, then it www. If you find something like this, somebody is asking for your password, somebody is asking for your username, just know that that website is for a Hacker. It's for a hacker. He's trying to steal your ID. So never do never work with this. And in fact, no bank, no Airtel, no MTN, no nothing. Whoever asks for your password, your PIN, your what, nothing. Please don't don't fall in the hands of crooks. So now check on the screen here the website this website here no 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 not this one oh sorry not this one which one okay now if you check this is uh, my dstv account which i watch dstv on my on my phone um check what's it what's the protocol that it is using what protocol is it using? HTTPS. HTTPS. Why? Because I have to log in to check here. I have to log in. Oh, so my sense. password must be secure. No one should see it. My username must be secure as it moves from this computer as it connects to DSTV in South Africa. It should be secure. Also, if it is my email, my emails, even before it opens, what protocol is it using? HTTPS. HTTP. Why? Because I log in. So where you, these others, just my website, Yachabe Chabe, there is no need of logging in they use it just ordinary HTTP because you will never log in, you will never use a password, you will never use your username. So 
there is no security. Now, an HTTP, HTTPS, an HTTPS website, you pay for the services, your security, just like you hire somebody to come and guard, if you are guarding your school, you are guarding your house, you pay that security guard or that security company, if it is G4, whatever it is, you pay them. Similarly, also here, you pay those companies. Let me open one uh, like Zanak W, uh, w www.zanako uh, zanako i think dot co dot zm if i open this one zanako zanako why is it also having http this one because we log in and also it must be secure you can't just allow it but now how do we tell that this company, there's a company that works behind it. If you check here, upper body, there's a Kaloku. Have you seen this Kaloku? Yes. yes. I click here, I can check. I can check and see uh, some few information. She's been telling me your information, for example, password or your credit card number is kept private when it's sent to this site. They're even guaranteeing me that it is safe, safe, very safe. Why? Because they pay somebody to, to, to look after the security. You get the point? <clears throat> yes. Okay. So let's say, therefore, uh, be particular about such thing. Okay, I think we have overstayed here. DNA. We already talked about it, so I skip it. DHCP, we already talked about it. It was the, uh, we already talked about this, isn't it? Yes. Okay. We go to layer six. Layer six, you recall that I said that um, some computers, like the way they arrange the bits, some computers will arrange the bits in ASCII. Some who arrange the codes in a stick. I don't know whether my spelling for a stick is correct here. I, I don't know, but it should be like this, similar to this Ebb stick. So now, who arranges it? Oh yeah, yeah. Actually, it's, it's here on the screen. Here, Ebb stick and ASCII. So now. The job of the translation layer, remember that we are coming from the layer on top where maybe I have typed my email. I've typed my email there. After typing my email, now I want to send my email. Remember the protocol that I'll use to send my email will be what protocol? It will be the S M T P. So my the protocol that I will use to send is S N S M T P. That's a protocol. But now I am sending to a different computer. Maybe that computer is not using ASCII. Maybe my computer is using ASCII. The other computer is using a stick. They're using a stick. So now, the way the Daddy, bits here Daddy. are arranged and the way the bits here are arranged, there's a slight difference. There's a cut difference. Okay, maybe for sake of clarity, let's do this. I think I have. Um, a presentation that I made for my students here when I was teaching. Let me just pull out that presentation. You see what I'm trying to say. Um, although all this uh, could delay us a bit, but 
but you told me you didn't learn these things. So, computer mathematics. Let's see, maybe here. This language I'm talking about, about the abstract, I mean, these bits and when I, it's a, it's a course on its own. This, so this is the course that I had with the students. Let me rush straight to what I'm trying to say right now. Under data representation. So under data representation, here I'm saying that uh, this point here, I'm saying that, um, you know, a group of bytes, a group of bytes, I mean, a group of bits, a group of bits is called a byte. But not every time that a group of a bits is going to be eight. Put one, two, three, four, five, six. They are not at times going to be eight. No. But by standard, we have come to accept that, okay, a group of 80 bits is going to be called a byte. That is what we have come to agree. But we should know that, of course, yes, there are eight, and that is what has become standard, but we should know that this group of eight can either be A, B, I mean, B, C, D, or M, C, D, or it can be in ASCII. They will differ. Although this one is odd, no one is using it anymore. Then this one, EBSTIC, IBM, like I said, IBM, but computer by IBM, must save a computer. They are still using EBSTIC. Of course, the bits are also eight. Whether an ASCII or an EBSTIC, they are still eight. Now, how eight are they? Look at this next screen. Okay, this one, this one, they used to present them the bits. How many? Six. Six. So, A and B, C, D stands for binary coded decimal. When they increase the number from six to eight, this binary coded decimal changed the name to look at what will follow. Look, look, look here. It became this one. Extended binary coded decimal interchange code. And the number of bits, there are how many? There are eight. So whether it's a sticky or ASCII, I mean, the one I'll be talking about, the bits are same, they are eight. So the difference will be this. I want you to see. Here, character A is written as, I want you to see the characters are here, combine them to make eight. So therefore, Character A is 1100001. Check, this is ab abstic. Now, how will the, one, the other one represent A? I'm going there to ask you. Ask you, okay, these are the, the numbers. These are the things I was talking about here. M will be like this, L will be like this in M sticky. But now come to ASCII. ASCII stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. And basically, it's either you have eight, seven characters or you have eight characters. That's how it is. But the one which is more popular is eight characters. Now, Eight characters of character A. A, how is it going to be written? A in ASCII is going to be written as 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 
one. one. Now, where is the difference? Kuma beginning you the difference. The rest, the rest will be the same. So now you are sending letter A from your computer to another person's computer, which is using EBST. Then whose job is it to translate and say that EA means EBA? EA tikairemba so ni EBST. EA tikairemba so ni ASCII. Whose job is it to help? as behind the scene there to translate, to do the job of interpreting these changes of numbers, rather, I mean, the bits. That's where this layer comes in, presentation layer. The line number one, responsible for proper translation. Have you seen the word translation? Responsible for proper translation or interpretation of a message sent through the network to this layer. What do we mean by to this layer? There is a layer on top, layer seven. I have typed my message using ASCII. Then it will come to layer, to this layer now, layer six. So layer six job is to translate. Number two. Point number two, think of it as the translator, the interpreter in a way, providing coding and the conversion services. Like example that I've given that, an example of this type of translation services occurs when translating old, but we must know that EBSTICI is old. Why is it old? IBM was the first company to make my computers. No one else. Then the Lenovo, then the Samsung, then the HP. Who was first? Uh, uh, H, uh, uh, IBM was first. And when IBM made bytes, and those bytes to represent them as bits, they used the eight bits and they named them as the Epstick, and they are still using Epstick because they were Niper. But the rest of the world, when they began, not Diva, everyone was making computer, they adopted another type of coding, putting these eight bits in groups, and they named them as ASCII. So now, we still have computers out there that are using Epstick. The new computers are using ASCII. But now, who translates? Layer six. Next point there. So by providing translation services, the layer ensures that data transferred from the application layer, application layer where I have typed in my mail, data typed at application layer of the one system can be read by application layer of the other system. Now here, we have two computers. This computer is sending, this computer is receiving somewhere very far. Like uh, then I send, I send my WhatsApp high and it's in a, a ski. Then it will go down into the down all these other layers and then it will come back to this other layer of this other computer. I'll explain what I mean by this later on. So now this high here, Hi here will come in a browser. It will come in a browser. This hi here will come in a browser. So, of course, here it's leaving the browser and then it will come and appear in another person's browser. So, but below, below these two layers, below, there's somebody who did the translation so that this hi will be seen by this hi, I mean, by the other person's AI or the other person's computer out there. So I hope I've made it clear. Then there's still one more job this layer does. Point number last says that also, what does it do? It does compression. Compression, what is compressed? Which means something which was big, you compress it to become small so that it can smoothly go on internet without chewing too much data. 
So when you send on your side, it will, de it will compress. It will make it small. When somebody who receives it, will receive it as small, but this will be decrypted to appear originally big, decrypted. What else does this layer do? It will do what I just explained, encrypt. It will encrypt on the center side, on the receiver side, it will do what? On the receiver side, what does it do? To decrypt. To decrypt. So therefore, don't, for, don't forget these things that I have said on this layer. Somebody can ask you a question. Can you define the protocol at layer, layer six? So mostly it is the, the issue of translation, number one, number two, compression, number three, uh, uh, encryption. Just know all these things. Any question? Any question? It's understood. Understood, huh? Yes. Okay. We have spent a lot of time on this thing. Okay, <laughs> we have spent a lot of time. Okay, fine, the next one, so that we move a bit. Session layer. What is a session layer? Simple, simple, session layer. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let me ask you a question. You dial star four, four, okay, star four, 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 hash. And then you wait, you wait, you don't do anything. You, you dial, then some menu come, a menu come and it is telling you to choose one of those, one of those things. Then you don't dial, what happens? What will happen? If you don't know, it's what, hap huh? what happens is you lose connection. Sometimes it will be taken out. Exactly. Do you know why you lose connection? Because layer five is behind that. So when you lose that connection because of your inactivity, you blame layer five. What is the job of layer five? Response, point number one, responsible for setting up. Once it sets up, then it manages. It will create, like for instance, you are here and the other computer is there. It will establish that connection. That is the job. I mean, the job is to create a session. A session like, like for instance, a meeting. That's the best experience, but it's not a meeting, but I'm just using the word meeting so that you understand. Wapanga meeting. So session five, Ipanga meeting between the two computers so that Vambo Kamba Ola. So it will set up that meeting and manage that meeting. When the two finish Kukamba Ola, what happens? it will dismantle, dismantle that meeting. It will dismantle that meeting. So, so session layer is, that session, session is like the meeting time. That time you have, you are seated in the meeting. That's, that's a session. That's, I think that's the best I can, I can say. I think it's the same way like session. Okay, there's a session, court session going on. Which means there's something going, a meeting of a Scott going on. So therefore, that establishment between that a connection, so much that it stays connected without disconnecting each other, it's called the session. So session, session. So therefore, when you dial, when you dial, um, star four 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 hash, and then it connects. It means you have been connected. The two of you have been connected. As long as you are keeping on busy, you are talking and all, that connection, that session is kept, is maintained. But if you don't use it, then it is dismantled. 
automatically. Automatically, it's dismantled automatically. So therefore, uh, point number two, after a response, the session might be ended or a new session is set up. I've already explained this. This is the first layer where a client server concept is introduced, which means there's one computer up there, the other computer there, these two computers, the, the one, you know, the, that friendship, why of course one computer is, uh, is uh, like my, my laptop here, and then there's a server computer there. This time you are con communicating to Google. 